Hello, 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 hello. Wherever you have to be located on this marvelous planet called Earth, I sincerely hope you are having a wonderful day, evening, or night, wherever you're located. Welcome to my channel on Bible Topics. As you see, you are my slave. I'm talking about the topic that the big three, from what I know, don't talk about. And I look on YouTube, I be looking at them sermons. I never hear no one talking about you are my quote slave. The big three. Uh, so called Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in the order of their origin. Judaism, Christianity, Islam. None of them, none of them preachers who are here ever will dare talk about slavery. But that's what I'm going to talk about today. What in the world does the book, based on the beliefs of the big three, what does it say about slavery? Does it coincide, contradict the way the Muslims have slavery? Yes, because in their country, I'm not a bona fide expert, but I've heard around. I've heard. I haven't been there. I heard they have slavery over there in the so-called Middle East. Have slavery in the Western world. They don't have it officially anymore, but they had slavery too. Basically, slavery has ended 150 years or 200 years ago, but the Western world was slavery too. How does the Bible coincide or disdain their particular method of slavery? So I welcome you to stay and join me and flip through the page of the Bible. Because I said, I will be flipping through the pages of scriptures. I'm not just going to read one or two scriptures and start talking for 30 minutes. Uh -uh -uh. I'm going to do what the Bible say. Precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. A little from this book and a little from that book. That's how I teach. So I welcome you to stay, regardless of your belief, whether you are an atheist, agnostic, Buddhist, Zori, do Zoriastism, or even a satanic person. Welcome to stay. Let's see. What does the Bible say about so-called slavery, and how does it contradict or hold up the treatment that the big three religions have had in their past. Or I should say, the big three regions of the world that uh, incorporate some Bible topics, books. How does the Bible coincide or disdain what they said? Let's start this lesson now. This coming from... Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 7. And I'm saying it's not coming from me. It's coming right from the Bible. If someone is caught kidnapping a fellow Israelite. But that can apply to fellow pagan. If someone is caught stealing a fellow Gentile. But here it's been specific. Israelite on Israelite. And remember, God chose them first. He said, I chose you first out of all the nations. I chose you. So if he chose them first, whatever goes for the Israelites can definitely go right on down to the Gentiles. Israel first. Gentiles second. Because he said, I chose you to be the light of the world, Israel. So let me finish. If someone is caught kidnapping a fellow Israelite and treating or selling them as a slave, the kidnapper must die. So Gentile, definitely, if you capture an Israelite, and I didn't say Israeli, like they like to say, uh, uh. If you was an Israelite, you're going to be called Israelite. You're not going to be called Israeli. 
He said, if someone has captured an Israelite or kidnapped them, the kidnapper must die. So that same law rule can be applied basically to how God rules slavery. You must purge the evil from among you. He says evil. It's evil. I don't care what nation you're in. It's evil to go kidnap an unsuspecting person and then make them your slave. Who in the world is guilty of doing that? Who? That's happening to the very day. I don't have to go back to the past because we know in the Western world who's guilty of doing that. Going to someone else's country, negotiation with people there, whether they took the sla- whether they kidnapped the person or they had a, a in between they kidnapped the person. The person was still kidnapped against their will. God does not like that. If he can say it for Israel, <laughs> it applies to all of them. The kidnapper must die. So, if you're in the Muslim world and you and your slave was taken unaware, they did not say, I want to be a slave, I want to pay off my debt. You are their kidnappers and you deserve to die. I never heard that preached in the church before. Have you? Never. Never. All right, so let's move on. Let's come from, still in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 15. If a slave has taken refuge with you. Now, this way it just said a slave. It didn't say whether the Israelite or Gentile, whatever. It just said, if a slave has taken refuge with you, anybody, do not hand them over to their master. Why in the world do you think God said that? Oh. If a slave ran away from the master or the mistress, that must mean, hey, the person wasn't taking care of the slave. They was a bruising that person in some form of fashion. A slave, especially in the ancient world, just don't get up and leave if they're being treated with respect and dignity. They don't want to be a slave. They still don't like being a slave. But they can put up with you if you're showing them respect and dignity. If the slave is running away, God say, don't give him back to that person who was abusing them in some fashion. I don't know how they was being abused, but you just don't run away because the, the slave owner gave you a, a birthday gift, a Christmas gift. It's going to take something hideous, horrible, to make you want to leave. But God said, if you got that slave, don't be willing to give them back. In the Western world, when it was slavery, here in the country, when I lived at, the slave ran away, they, they chased the slave from state to state, giving me war to people who turned the slave over. But if you turned the slave into the master, for however much money you got, you still not listening to God because he said they ran away for a reason. So we learn about what the Bible say about the slave. So far, it seems like it wants the slave to be treated humanely in Islam. I heard some of the vile treatments of them slaves. And a part of the worst world where I live at, they used to treat the slaves terribly. And even when slavery was over, they still treated them worse than human. Let's, now we're jumping to the New Testament. This coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 21. Were you a slave when you were called? So they say, hey, when you became a Christian or a follower of, as he said back in that day, a follower of the way. That's what it used to be called. It wasn't called Christianity in the first century, second century. 
Second century, it was called the way. Were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you. He said, okay, if you was a slave, I know you don't like it. No one want to be a slave. No one. Even if the master treating you nice and kindly, you just don't want to be a slave. But you had to for various reasons. Give yourself over for slavery. Don't be troubled. Although, if you can, gain your freedom. Uh-oh, here we go again. The Bible say, if you are a slave, if you can, gain your freedom. So God want people to be free. He said, if you can be a slave, if you can sell your money, you can pay off your debt, get your freedom. So he's telling the masses right there. Give your slave the chance to earn their freedom. In the country that I am was in, this many slave owners played chicken with the slave. The slaves, the slaves saved the money up. <laughs> and the master took the money and still kept them in slavery. Still kept them. A lot of tricks, a lot of deceit. But God said, if you let your slaves go free, if they can afford it, and they paid off their debt or whatever. If you can earn your freedom, try to earn your freedom. So they're saying, God is not saying, I, I like you being a slave until the day you die. If you can be free, be free. All right, this coming from 1 Peter. See the New Testament now. It's not just our Old Testament. The New Testament talk about slavery too. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16. Live as free people. But do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as God's slave. Oh, so we are so all of us, somebody's slave, whether you are Islam, Judaism, Christianity, the big three. You still are God's slaves. But still, try to live your life as a free people. But do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as God's slaves. So if you live as God's slave, you're going to try to. Honor your master. Honor God. So remember, whether you're rich or poor, whatever your ethnic group, you're God's slave. So hey, but God not a hard slave master. He don't. He, he, he he's not grueling if you obey his commandments. That is. One still in Peter, First Peter, First Peter, chapter two, verse eighteen. Slaves, in reverent of, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your master. See, now here in the, in the part of the world I used to live in, they used to love to show that part of the, the slaves that were that part of the world I live in. They used to love to show this scripture. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit to your masters. They used to love to show that one, not only to those who are good and considerate. But also to those who are harsh. Yes, yes, yes. Submit to your masters. Don't be chaotic. Don't be causing mayhem and foolishness. Live as best as you can. Try to live the master. Even though they're harsh and, and grievous, God will take care of that person, which he has done many of times. But in a part of the world I live in, in the Western world, the slave owner... They, they, they quoted this one. Even when I was a child growing up, I heard that all my life. See, reverend your master. Listen to your master. See, I'm showing you from all angles. I'm not just trying to uh, be biased. I'm showing. I don't have all of them. I show like 12 or 15 because there's like hundreds of scriptures. This is coming from 1 Timothy chapter 1. I'm starting with verse 8 and then reading to verse 11. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. So the Ten Commandments are good when they're used properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers. So it's for them. The Ten Commandments is written for the lawbreakers so they can know you're doing wrong. This is what you try to should live by. And, re and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and even religious. For those who have killed their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, 
for those practicing homosexuality. Here we go. For slave traders, the Ten Commandments is written for the slave traders. The law is written for the slave traders. Are you breaking those commandments? Are you? Are you respecting your neighbor? Are you respecting the slaves' wives? Do you covet what the slave had? Do you covet his wives? Do you covet their uh, strength to use it to make you money? They're still coveting. The law was made for all these sins and it includes slave traders and liars and perjurers and for whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine that conform to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God which he entrusted me. So we see right here a slave trader is right there with all the other sins. So if you're going around screaming and killing the homosexual, whatever country you're in, the Islamic country, the so-called Christian country, the so-called Judaism country, if you are a slave trader, you are no better than the so-called homosexual, the unholy, the irreligious, the one who killed their mother or father, the murderers, sexually immoral, and the homosexual. You are no better than them. You're just as evil and as wicked as all those others. So the people who enslave people in the Western world in the past, the slave traders, you was no better than all these other wicked sins that God despises. And you know throughout the world how they like to always bash the homosexual. I'm not saying it's, it's a great, but you know the hypocrites, they bash the homosexual and they hide their sin. If you was a slave trader and you running up and down the street screaming about the homosexual, you're one of them Islamic countries and your son and daughter say they're homosexual, but you're a slave trader, you better leave that son alone or daughter alone because if you keep, you are a slave trader and you're the same unholy person as the so-called homosexual. Moving on. Still in the New Testament, like I said, the New Testament got a lot. Not just the Old Testament. So those people like to bash the Old Testament. This is coming from a lot from the New Testament. So you can't bash it now. Colossians chapter 3 verse 22. Slaves, obey your earthly masters and everything. See, I'm saying it again. He said, listen to him. When you became a Christian, you was a slave. God not going to magically make the slavery stop. If you, was a, if you was a tax collector and you became a follower of the way, you're not going to stop being a tax collector unless you choose to because sometimes you're just going to walk away from it. But if you're a slave, you just can't easily walk away until you paid your debt off. And do it only when their eyes are on you. And, and do it not only when their eyes are on you, so even when they're not looking, still obey. Don't go, don't go stabbing your master or your mistress in the back. You obey them when they're looking at you face to face, eyeball to eyeball, so you still obey them when they're not looking at you. And to curry their favor. Because if you, they see that you can do like this, like I'll ask, like my ancestor Joseph, when he was a slave in Egypt, he did good to his slave master, or Potiphar, and Pharaoh. When they could see him, he did good. And when they didn't see him, he was still doing good. So he carried their favor. But with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. So when you're doing it, say, Lord, this is the state I am when I came to you. So I will humbly remain in state until you decide to 
deliver me from this state. If you was a criminal in jail and you became a follower of the way, you still have to be in jail serving that jail sentence. So if you're a slave, you got to still serve your sentence. If you're in jail, you still got to serve your, uh, your time. This is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9. Like I said, I'm coming from the New Testament. A lot coming from the New Testament. And, okay, this is the point right here. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them. Uh Uh-oh, here we go. Treat your slaves respectfully. Treat them kindly. Treat them humanely. Treat them the way you would treat your own family. Do not threaten them. Don't go out there threatening them, cussing them out, screaming at them. Since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. Because if you are a follower of the way, he's your master and theirs. So you treat them with respect. And there is no favoritism with him. So you think about God, he don't. Magically take out the state that you was in when you became a follower of the way. You're still in that state. You're in jail, you're going to be stuck in jail. You're a slave, you got to serve a slave. You're a free person, okay, you're free. But he's not going to magically eliminate the state that you was in. The, um, the original or the starting Christians was the people of Israel. They were still under Roman rule. So they, whether they became a follower of Christ or not, they still had to follow the Roman edicts. God, now, you remember what God, what Jesus said, render to Caesar the thing that is Caesar and to God the thing that is God. He's not going to take out the state that you was in. Let's go now, let me jump back to the Old Testament now. Exodus chapter 21, verse 2. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years. Remember, the Hebrews are God's chosen people. When he's telling them something, the same thing applies to the Gentile. Especially if they became a, like a Hebrew, a Gentile. If they took up the Hebrew ways, then they had to follow the Hebrew law. So whatever applies to the Hebrews or the Israelites, be guaranteed it applies to all the other nations as well. It applies to everybody. But during this time period, they're the ones who had the written law. See, the Gentiles didn't have it. So in this period where we all can read the Bible, Islamic, Judaism, Christianity, we all can read the Bible. So these rules apply to all of us. Back in the time this Bible was written, only the Israelites had the written law. So the Gentiles couldn't follow it because they ain't have it. They ain't know. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he has to serve you for six years. So if you have a slave, six years. But in the seventh year, he shall or she, he or she shall go free without paying anything. So in God's eyes, you should have a slave just for six years. If they're Hebrew, then after that, the seventh year, you you just let them go. They paid off their debt. Now we jump back to the New Testament. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Now people love this and they quote this from the depth too. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So it took it to a spiritual level. See, it didn't say on earth, we on earth there still is a Jew and a Gentile. On the planet earth, there is a slave and a free person. On the planet earth, there's still a male and a female. Remember this. Jesus said, when we enter the kingdom of God, there's no male or female because we're going to be like angels. 
So, we are not one in Christ yet. Right now, we still stuck on this planet Earth. So he took up to a spiritual level. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. Right now, it's still a Jew or Gentile. And they said, the Jewish people, they'll let you know it's a Jew or Gentile. They will let you know that. The so-called Jewish people, they'll scream out, well, I'm, I'm a Jew. You're a Gentile. They'll say that to your face running up and down the street. Neither slave nor free. And the country that have slavery, the free man or woman, they're going to let you know that they're free. And a slave, well, sadly, will let you know that they're a slave. There is, nor is there male or female. Hey, come on now. On this planet Earth, there's male and female. So it, he's talking about a spiritual level. When we get into the kingdom of God, all the stuff won't exist. When you get there, when you see Christ face to face, you don't need to worry about who is a Jew, who's a Gentile. When you see Christ face to face, you don't got to worry about who's slave or who's free. When you see him face to face, you don't need to worry about am I male or am I female? Because when we get there, we all will be one, one thought, one mind, one soul, one accord. When we see Christ, we we'll all will be on one accord. So that's what that's talking about. On earth, there still is a Jew and a Greek. On the planet Earth and some countries, there still is a free person and a, and a slave. Right now on the planet Earth, there's a male and a female. And you go to a you go to a mall or any establishment, you got a bathroom for male and female. And not no one bathroom. So while we're still on this planet, there's still a separation. When we see him face to face, then it's going to be one. You ain't got to worry about all that stuff anymore. This, now we jump back to the Old Testament. Like I'm jumping back and forth. Leviticus 35. I'm a Leviticus 25. Verse 39. If any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to you, that's how most became slaves. It's letting you know right there. They sold themselves because they was poor. They sold themselves because they was in debt. No one kidnapped them. If any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to you, do not make them work as slaves. So when you get them, you can take them, but do not treat them as some slave or nobody. Remember, God wants you to treat the person Respectfully. Now that applies to the Gentiles too, because like I said earlier, back in the biblical days, only the Hebrews had these words. Now in this modern age, it's worldwide. So it applies to everybody now. So let's keep moving. This is Titus chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. T, okay, this they, they used to love to say this too. In a part of the world that I come from, I'm sure these teachers out all, all of other countries that have slaves too. They throw this in the slave face. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters and everything to try to please them, not to talk back to them, and not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted so that in every way they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. So he said, look, if you are a slave and you are a follower of the way, listen to your master or mistress. Do not back talk them. Do not argue with them. Listen to them. Try to please them. Don't go stealing food. I know you may be hungry. You may be hungry. But don't. But he didn't even say food. Don't steal anything from them. If they got an expensive watch and they forgot where they put it at and you know where it's at. Don't steal it. Don't lie about where the watch is at. Tell him or her. 
And when you do all these things, they, they will have full trust in you. And the most important thing, when they when they see you doing this, they will be impressed. And it's a high probability that they will see God as attractive. And they will be attracted to serve the God who their servant is serving because of the way you radiate his holy nature. Let's move on. It's coming from Luke chapter 12, verse 47 to 48. Okay, now this Jesus talking here, this come out of his mouth. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants to do will be beaten with many blows. Okay, okay, that's contradicting the Bible. That's contradicting what the Bible said, but Jesus is keeping it real. There's one thing about Jesus. He kept it real. He knew there were some slave masters who were savage to the slave. If the slave didn't listen, they will severely beat the slave. He just being realistic. <laughs> but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with food, food bro. So he said, if you don't know and you make a mistake, but you don't listen, the master will beat you with food. A few blows, but the one who knew what to do and refused him. But God said, Don't refuse the door. You knew what to do and you refused to listen to the master. Then God said, Okay, you deserve what you got. You get beat with many blows. God don't want you to. He wants the master to be treat you humanely, but hey, you didn't listen. So you get what you get. From everyone who has begun, from everyone who has been given much, much will be the man. And from the one who has been given, who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So, hey, this slave who's trusted with much will be expected to do with much. The slave who's trusted with just a few things will be expected just to do a few things. That's what it's saying. Let's del let's keep on moving. Let's go from Exodus chapter twenty-one, verse twenty to twenty-one. Anyone who, oh, oh see, now, this contradicting what Jesus said now. It's contradicting. See, this is God talking now. God talking. Jesus was giving an example of how the masters really behave. He didn't, he didn't say whether he agreed with or not. He just was saying how they really behave. They beat the slave. He just being realistic. But now God talking. Anyone who beats their male or female slave with a rod must be punished. If the slave dies, okay, oh, wait, wait, wait. So it said you can beat him. So it's saying you can beat the slave if you don't listen. You can beat him. <laughs> but if they die, you got to be punished. As a direct result. But they are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two. Since the slave is their property. Now, if you beat the slave severely and the slave recover in a few days, why, well, that must have been some beating. You are you off the hook. But if you beat the slave so severely that you kill a poor man, like in a country where I reside, like in a country where the, they many of them they beat the slaves so severely that the slave died. But they was never punished for beating a slave. Not that I know of. And if they was punished, I don't think they had to give any money compensation. They had to pay nobody for it. Let's keep jumping on. This is coming from Exodus chapter 21, verse 26 to 27. How are the slaves treated? An owner who hits a male or female slave in the eye and destroys it must let the slave go free. To compensate for the eye. This is basically saying, hey, you hit your slave in such a way that you damage them. You knock out their eye. You bust their nose. You chop off the ear. You make their arm become lame. You make them crippled where they can't walk straight anymore. 
You severely damaged your slaves so much. Now, God said, you got to let them go free. And the owner who knocks out the tooth of a male or female. Here we go. And then see, it's talking about female now. It said, who knocks the tooth of a male or female slave must let the slave go free to compensate for the tooth. So he said, even if you hit them so hard and you knock out a tooth, it didn't even say the front tooth. It just said, if you knock out any teeth in an adult, could you remember an adult? But it didn't even say adult. Slave. It didn't say any slave. So the slave could be a child for all I know. You you break the child arm, you break the child leg, you can't walk, you can't hold it from that hand no more, then a child will go free. Man or woman, boy or girl. You knock out the tooth, man or woman, boy or girl. You knock out the tooth, God says, let them go. And remember here, it did not even say Hebrew. It did not say even Israelite. This applied to all. Oh, like I said, back in that time, only the Hebrews had the written word. Now, every nation, every people got a Quran, got a Torah. Have a Bible. So it applies to all of you. You knock out the tooth. They go for it. Now how many times in the world did that happen? In the western world. Where I'm from. The slave got beaten. They got the eye knocked out. And they still had to stay a slave. The master chopped off the foot. The master chopped off a hand. And you still with the slave. So. They was, and they said they was Christians, but they was not obeying God. Because of God said, if you damage them in any way, they go free. Here in the Western world and in the Islam world, they probably knock out many teeth from the slave. Not one, but God said a tooth. One tooth. You got to let them go free. Do the Muslims obey this commandment? Do they? They said they love Islam. They got the same books that we got, from what I know. When the Muslims do this to their slaves, and the present day, because they still have slaves in some of the Muslim world countries, do they let the slave go free? Back in my country's time of slavery, in the Western world, when they knocked the tooth out, they didn't let nobody go free, so they truly was not obeying God. But they said they loved them to death. That was not every Sunday, very praising we love God. But beating the slave, cutting off their arm, cutting off their foot, knocking their teeth out their mouth, but they never let them go free. See, this coming from God. So God does look out for the slaves. See, nobody never talk about this. Who you? No one ever talk about how God treated slaves. No one. Again, still in Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 15 to 16. If a slave has taken refuge with you, do not hand them over to their masters. They're saying it again. The slave coming to you because the master did something wrong. That's why they're running away. So don't go giving the slave back to the master. Let them live among you wherever they like. So if they wanted to stay in that community, you let them live in the community. Let them live among you wherever they like and in whatever town they choose. So wherever they want to go, they go in that town. Do not oppress them. You free. So why do you want to oppress them even more and send them back to that master or mistress who causing tremendous hardship? Tremendous. Because that's the only time when a slave run to run away. Even in this country where I came from. The more you oppress the slave, the more they want to run. None of them like being a slavery. But if you show them a little bit of dignity, they could bear it a little bit. Moving on. This comes from Leviticus chapter 25, verse 44 to 46. 
You are male and female slaves. Oh, see, we go again. Male and female. All to come from the nations around you. So that's saying to the Israelites back in that time, the Hebrews. Your slaves are not to be your own people. You get the slave from the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Canaan. The Gergesites, they be your slaves. But you have to treat them with respect. He still said, you must treat them respectfully. From then, from them, you may buy slaves. So you go buy slaves to them. Because he said it earlier, you cannot buy a Hebrew slave. But you can buy a slave from the Gentile, but you still going to treat them with respect and dignity. You may also buy some of them of the temporary residents living among you. So Whoever want to be set himself into slavery, you can accept them. And members of their clans born in your country. And they will become your property. Okay, now he said it's your property. You can bequeath them to your children as inherited property. And can make them slaves for life. Okay, so the Hebrews, they only can be slaves for six years. But the others, the Gentiles... They can be slaves for life, but God, remember, he still said, the master, you still should give your slave the opportunity to buy their freedom. Still let them go free, whether they're Hebrew or Gentile. Offer them freedom. You can bequeath them to your children as a herd of property and can make them slaves for life. But you must not rule over your fellow Israelites ruthlessly. Here we go again. You, even though your fellow Israelite slave, you cannot rule of them ruthlessly. But God said you want, He don't want you to treat anybody ruthless, even the Gentiles. Because many times in the Bible, He still looked at the Gentiles, especially when it came to Jonah. So God, He chose Israel first, but He still cared and had compassion and tenderness for the Gentiles. Alright, so that's it for this lesson, my good people. On a subject, the church, the mosque, the synagogue, don't talk about slavery. What does the Bible, what does the Torah, what does the Quran say about slavery? Heavenly Father, thank you for putting on my heart to go over this lesson and to do my research and for me to learn how you rule slavery. You try to look out for the slaves. You don't want them to be treated harshly like an animal. You want the slave to be treated with humanity and dignity. Thank you for giving me that lesson. I hope whoever listened to this lesson will have a better insight how God Rue slavery. There are many, many more scriptures. There's a hundred and it was over a hundred when I did my research. I only took out a few sample. But from this fruit sample, I hope they get glean as insight on your ruins of slavery. Thank you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Until the next time, family, peace.